to thank any, uh, each and every one of you today to, for this opportunity that you have given to us on something very close to my heart, the subject of health. Um, I, was, I was asked to, to come over and talk about, uh, about this today, but I wasn't sure exactly what I need to do. So I'm just going to do what I used to do. I, um, um, I have a very, uh, what do you call it, passion on prevention. I'm hoping that um, the, this afternoon session is going to help um, um, each, each and every one of you on the work that you do, because I think it's very important. I would like to congratulate each one of you in this room for, get, for, for becoming a, a, a part of this uh, uh, organization, which makes my work a little bit easier. The reason for that congratulations is because to become a part of the chain, to hopefully break the chain of diseases. And we, uh, we're going to find out what are the chain of diseases. I represent the Wellness Institute. I am from Silicon Valley, California. Um, and we've been in the Philippines. This is my 12th year in the Philippines. And we have, so we have Philippines, both Philippines and France. Uh, uh, today, um, in the afternoon today, we will talk about prevention is the best cure. The reason for that is that I'm hoping that people don't wait for the crisis, that we don't wait for the disease before uh, we, we take care of ourselves. Why do we want to do prevention? Because one in two men and this room will be diagnosed with cancer. Why do we want to do prevention? Because one in three w women in this room will be diagnosed with cancer. And one in, in four that were diagnosed with cancer will die from the disease. Why do we want to do prevention? Because every minute, 10 people die from tobacco use. This is worldwide. <laughs> All right. Why do we want to do prevention? Because every minute, seven people die from diabetes-related illnesses. And why do we want to do prevention? Because every minute, two people die from lung cancer. And why still we don't want to do prevention? Because every minute, one person dies from cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease, heart disease is still the number one killer worldwide for both men and women. Why do we want to do prevention? Because every minute, one woman dies from breast cancer. So why do we get sick? We're going to talk today about the underlying causes of disease. Why do we get sick and why, how come our body manufactures diseases? Number one, um, we have uh, seven factors, but number one is our unhealthy diet. I'm not going to, uh, what do you call them? Uh, because this is, I don't want you to be bored with the lecture, and if you have a question at the end, we will discuss them. Uh, the number one factor on unhealthy diet is our processed or simple carbohydrates. I think I don't have to um, enumerate each one of them. You can see on the board what's in it. Um, let me just make, make it simple. The simple carbohydrates are, example, the pandisal, and the complex carb is the saba, or the kamote. If it is the white rice is simple carbs, the brown rice is complex carbs. So for, for us to be able to, um, to distinguish which one is the simple, uh, everything that's at the red ribbon and gold deluxe are, all, are simple, uh, simple carbohydrates and sugar. And, uh, who has the, and then the saba and the kamote and the um, whole grain bread are all complex carbs. The next one on unhealthy diet is our artificial sugar. I think this is very important because sometimes we want to lose weight and we take, or we, if we have diabetes, we, well, we, didn't, uh, we thought that we can be, we can take everything, we can just eat everything because um, we're using artificial sugar. Artificial sugar is a splenda. 
the equal, the neutral sweet, all of those things. But those are synthetic and our liver cannot process them. So if you have diabetes and you take the you take a splendor for your coffee, um, the liver is going to be more sick. It's not going to help, and there, and and because um, our, 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 our body, human being, are not machine. We are created with a lot of sensitivity, and the number one that it, that is going to suffer is our liver. Why do we get sick? Uh, during um, using unhealthy diet because of your trans fats are the main cause of chronic diseases. Trans fats, I'm going to explain a little bit of trans fats. Trans fats is from hydrogenated oil. If you look, if after today, hopefully, uh, hopefully, I'm not ambitious. When I give a lecture, I just would like to plant that seed of awareness. That's all. I'm never going to tell you, you cannot eat this, you have to eat that, or you cannot do this, you have to do that. Because even if I say it, it's not going to do very much for you. Um, it, it's not going to help um, um, uh, anyone because we control our own body. So um, those are the those are the food that causes a lot of trans fat. We have a lot of frying. Uh, the reason for doing hydrogenation is because of the shelf life, and it improves the taste of the food. Even if, um, even if um, you give them for a long time, uh, it will still taste good because it, it has synthetic stuff. Um, next one on unhealthy diet are the sodium nitrites and nitrates. They are carcinogens added to your meat, to your hot dog, bacon, so sausages to look fresh. Before, with our great grandparents, they preserve food with salt. But because of a lot of people worldwide, so they have to produce more food, so they have to use chemicals. And this is one of the causes of cancer and other chronic diseases. Uh, another one are additives. At least there are 14,000 man-made chemicals added to our, first, uh, to our food supply. And we're not going to talk about the 14,000, I'm just going to talk about one chemical that we add to our food supply. Uh, it, this is the MSG. Um, another word for MSG is the Bechen, and another one is the Magic Saran. <laughs> because yeah, because they, uh, they know that people are getting aware of the MSG, so the, so the, so the company gets really smart. So uh, they created another one. They created the magic setup and the another one for the rice. They make your rice very white. Yeah, the rice. Uh, yeah, the rice made. Yeah. So uh, those are the ones. It's uh, in the what it does. What the MSG. If you taste the MSG, the betin, if you put them in your tongue, it does not have a taste. It's tasteless. What it what it does. It it uh, alters your brain. Yeah, it alters the brain. It's not the tongue, it's the brain that gets altered. That's why it's very dangerous to our children. And uh, uh, if you become sensitive to it, you will have headaches, you will have, you will cause, it will cause a lot of trouble to your health. The next one on unhealthy diet are the genetically modified organism. I know that in the Philippines, this is not very familiar, because sometimes we get really busy and we never really pay attention to what, ha what is going on. But in the Philippines, you have three kinds of maize. The maize, the corn. The, they have three kinds of genetically modified corn. Uh, I'm not sure if the one that's what's selling in front of Ateneo is GMO, but, I'm, but I am sure that that, maize, that corn is not a good corn. Either they are GMO or they're really loaded with pesticides. So I'm going to, I know that uh, I lecture this at the University of Santo Tomas, the USD, and uh, what they call them, this is a very lengthy subject, but we have to be aware. The reason for that is the two main ingredients of our fast food, of the food outside, are the corn and the soy. And both of them are genetically modified. At least 96% of corn worldwide are GMO, and 94% of soy worldwide are GMO. So
So that is the, I'm, I'm sure that in this room, somehow, one way or another, one of your relative or people that you know is, you know, had experience or have chronic disease. Chronic disease is diabetes. Remember what we have mentioned a while ago? Those are the chronic disease. And let's study, it's learn, let's learn a little bit about GMO. Uh, that, there is a corn, I don't have a pointer, so I'll just, you know, if you look at the corn um, that we have, um, the, the corn before it was modified is when you cook the corn, it has a worm on the tip of the corn uh, when you boil them. And then so we don't, the company don't want to have corn that, that's not perfect. So they will take the, that corn and they will take the BT. The, the second one is the bacteria. It's, it's, a, it's a bacteria and they put the DNA of the bacteria to the DNA of the corn. They mix them together. So when they plant that corn, that corn become a genetically modified corn. From the roots to the stem, to the, to the, to the leaves and to the fruits, the entire plant becomes a pesticide. So when the, this is a European corn borer because this was this this slide I used when I lecture in in Europe. But you have an, the European corn borer. We have in Asia, the Philippines, an Asian corn borer. So the worm, the what? Uh, when they come to the corn, to the plant, the, to the corn plant, any part of the corn, the the stem, the leaves before they even reach the fruit of the corn, the worm, the wood is going to die. Because the entire plant, from the roots, the entire, it becomes a pesticide. And San Miguel is the biggest beneficiary of the, I mean, because they are the biggest manufacturer of uh, uh, pesticides, the, the feeds, the feeds. So they give corn to the, so the, this company, they give corn to the farmers. And they never tell the farmers and the community that, hey, you cannot eat this because it, this, this can destroy your health. They don't. They just said, hindi pwedeng kainin kasi, no, no, uh, hindi pwedeng kainin, period. That's all they say. They don't say anything that it's going to destroy your kidneys and it's going to destroy the liver. But when you have the corn, it looks beautiful, it's a perfect corn. And if you have children on the farm, they're going to eat. That, and then most of them are at the north, you know. Um, since 2009, I decided to become a missionary doctor, but I do organic farming. That's why I, I'm very familiar with what's going on. And I was hope, I'm hoping that the Philippines will stop to the corn that we are not going to genetically modify our rice, but you have one rice that's genetically modified, the golden rice of GMO. And like I said, it's a, it's a very vast subject, but later on when we have a chance to see each other, I'll explain it more. Next one, on why do we get disease is dehydration. Uh, most of you in this room are young, uh, so that our children do not drink liquid anymore that has no coloring and no flavor. Even as adults, we don't like to drink any uh, water anymore. That is what they call them, that, that's plain water. Uh, it is very important. Water is, um, um, it helps us in the metabolic process, metabolism. It transports our nutrients and it, it is help our body and waste removal. The next, uh, in the Philippines, we only have, we only add, add chlorine to our water. In the U.S., at least 10 states in the U.S., one of them is California, we add chloride to our water. And in, there has been a study in, uh, there has been a big study in the U.S. Um, in, in the Philippines, we never taste our, I mean, we, we never test our water. Um, Testing. We call them environmental uh, EPA, Environmental Protective Agency. We don't have them in the Philippines. We we don't test the water, so we never really know what's in the water. But in the U.S., we found cocktails of pesticides and medication because the 
the, uh, the medical, we have so much medication, and the number one medication that's, that's found in our drinking water are the birth control pill, I mean, a trace of birth control pills, and the medicine that we use to, uh, what do you call them, take care of cholesterol. Your, your body will go back to its normal, the, the organs and, uh, will go back to its normal function. But after that, hopefully, you can, we can continue on uh, taking care of ourselves using the food and other stuff that, that is um, less invasive. In 1527, Paracelsus, this is father of modern pharmacology, says that all drugs are poison. The benefit depends on the dosage. If we take them properly, uh, it will help us, but if we, if we abuse them, it will help us to die much faster. So, um, what we chew, what we swallow, digest, and absorb can dramatically extend or shorten our lives. These are, I know that some of you, the reason why I put this in, and I put them in my lecture, because the, the, um, developing country, the developing country is the beneficiary of chemicals or drugs or pesticides that are not banned in the U.S. but still being shipped to the Philippines, India, and other parts of Asia so that they sell them here. Even if they're already not, not, uh, not being used in the U.S., they're still being used here, including your, uh, uh, what do you call them, the pesticides. So just in case you're, you get familiar, at least you will know what it will cost. Because I know that people in the Philippines, I have patients that are taking Crestor. And then this is the Sola, and this is the Accutane. Anyway, the next one under chemicals are alcohol. Alcohol is the leading cause of liver cancer. Another under chemical, why would sugar be a chemical? Because before, sugar are uh, kept in a lock key cabinet because sugar is, uh, is, uh, is considered a um, chemical uh, drug. It's actually a drug. If there, is a, if there is a cancer on the person, stay away from sugar because sugar feeds the cancer cell. And if there is no cancer, sugar lowers down your immune system at least uh, 40%. Next one on chemical is smoking. I know that this one is very popular. Um, actually, I was I was writing a um, I was writing a series of book on the cancer, but I stopped that because I was finishing the 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 smoking um, kit, the smoke the the book on smoking because it's um, even conventional medicine. They're, they're, they're very passionate that we have to help our people and the Philippines and other parts of the world because it's, it's difficult to smoke. Smoking is the leading cause of lung cancer. Increase the risk of mouth, larynx, pharynx, esophagus, kidney, pancreas, and bladder cancer. And they also um, increases the risk of cervical, of cervical cancer for women. Um, next one is the caffeine. If you look at them, Christine, we don't have any more life. You have taken everything that we that we have because like everything is seen to be bad. Um, what do you call them? Affects the nervous system and adrenal function. After actually on caffeine, caffeine is coffee, tea, chocolate, and soft drinks. Um, on on the on, on the score, uh, the women is not so. Uh, it's not so beneficial for us women to take a lot of caffeine, especially if you're nearing menopause, because it leaches the calcium out from your bone. Yeah, and uh, and the adrenal and the adrenal part. Otherwise, it's not uh, what do you call them. Uh, if you take them in moderation, like it's bad if you're like for example coffee. If you take coffee once a day and you don't really add a lot of stuff like tablespoon of sugar and a lot in the uh, the creamer if you if you're taking I, I think it's a uh, um, moderation it should be okay uh, another cause of disease another reason why our body manufactures disease are deadly emotion anger anxiety hatred impatience disharmony greed terror fear envy sadness cruelty and jealousy this one 
and this is not I think, I think applicable to the Filipinos because they're always so fun loving. And they don't have this kind of emotion. The next one is stress. On stress, we have two conditions on stress. We have the infectious agent, which is our flu, our before we had SARS, and then the the uh, what do you call them? Uh, the ahini. The ahini. Uh, dengue is also an infection. This uh, it, ca it causes stress in our body. And another one is this, these are the fun stress. This is the regular stress that makes us creative and productive. We have the job, the school, the financial, the health, environment, relationship problems. Those, these are problems, these are stress that comes and go. The next one is mental and spiritual toxins, negative like thinking, biases and prejudices, and the media toxins that always feed us with a lot of information. The seventh one on the cause of disease is the toxic environment. At least we have two million synthetic substances known to man that affects us. Forget about the two million. Just the jeepney we have, the, the diesel, it's very toxic. But the Philippines now, the Manila, where they're, they're trying everything they can, the MMDA, to, 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 low, to lower down because I think before three years ago, I think we're number two. The number, the number one uh, most toxic environment is Mexico, and I think the Philippines, and Manila, is number two. Yeah. Yeah, we're number two. We're good. We're number two. And the toxins, the environment, we cannot do very much, but we can help by planting trees. But we have. But we have control, the one that we have in our body and home. Normally, we're, I mean, we're at home, so you can control. You can maybe be creative and use um, healthy stuff. In the Philippines, you have a lot of the the kamyas, the kamyas, the um, the it's a it's a. Yeah, we have the calamansi, we have the kamyas, and we have the dayak. Yeah. yeah, those are very good um, plant or fruit that we can use for cleansing. And uh, what the other one, the other one is a microwave. Most of you guys have, yeah, most of you guys already have katulong or help in the house. Make your make your helper work for you for work for the salary that's working. Um, before you arrive, they microwave your food. No, they have to heat your food on a real stove. Okay. So we have the one in our bodies. Remember, on the other side, if we put nothing in our stomach except junk food, you see, I think McDonald's is there and a lot of stuff, and uh, what do you call them, Krispy Kreme and Dunkin' Donuts, all of them. If continuously we put that's all we eat, our body cannot sustain. No, even if you take a lot of supplements, it's not going to do very much because we need nourishment. We need, we need to nourish ourselves. We need to nourish our tissues. We need to nourish our organs. And women, from the morning that you wake up until the night time, you keep on spraying and uh, what they call them, applying a lot of stuff in your in your body. Uh, in 2008, I think 2008, I had four lymphoma patients. It's okay if it's 75, but no, number. the other one is 14, the other one is 19, the other one is 21, and the other one is 24 that just newly graduated for nursing. The, the, the 14 years old was a third year high school. Um, she said that she applied um, the cream to make her skin white because she was really brown. But I, and then so she did it, I think, for three years, and then she contracted, she, she had lymphoma. But I, you know, um, for, for us, for women that are, that are not very fair skin, your skin is beautiful as is. Yeah. Stop tampering them with, with a lot of stuff that's artificial. I'm not going to say what it is, because most people, they save their money, they don't eat lunch, they, they don't, they, they skip, uh, food, 
just so they can have injection of locatanyong for 1,200. <laughs> yeah. And that locatanyong is synthetic. Glogatayong is produced by the liver. So what you do is to take something that will make the liver healthy so that you have a production of glogatayong. Instead of injecting. Okay. So what is the key to optimum health and well-being? Uh, the goal is that we can break the chain of diseases because 85% of chronic diseases can be avoided and prevented by diet and lifestyle changes. You believe that? Yes. It's true. The great news is that regardless of physical and mental limitations, from the disabled to diabetics, everyone can achieve the best possible level of health and well-being. Everyone, even if you are already on a wheelchair, even if you are already diabetic, even if you are already, actually, if you are going to, if you are diabetic and you are and you don't want to do anything, you don't want you want the diabetes to stay in your body, maintain with insulin, do not maintain with the drugs. People in the Philippines are very scared with injection of insulin. One of the icons of this country, I I know most of you know him, is that he he is already ninety six years old. And he was diagnosed with diabetes at age twenty seven. He is still alive. He has outlived a lot of young people that I know, 45 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, that die from diabetes. Actually, once you have diabetes, you almost don't die from it. You die from the complications, cardiovascular disease and renal failure. The reason why I'm encouraging you, it's, isn't it strange that I encourage you to go insulin? That is if you love your disease, if you love your diabetes and you don't want to do, and you don't want to part with it, just go ahead and inject with insulin. Because insulin is closest to the insulin that our body, put, that our pancreas produces. But the drugs that you take, uh, 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 the meth, the Yamicron, Glucophage, all of those are going to kill your heart muscle and going to cause your renal failure. So what is the goal? The goal, if we look at the traditional disease, um, uh, main, the, the disease, the traditional disease, uh, what do you call them? Uh, maintenance, we have 20%. And most of us are on at risk are 80%. So if we go, we would like to be on the healthy side so that that air we can bring in. So what are the pillars of health? Proper diet and lifestyle provided provide food for new beginning. You know, um, one of the reasons why I stayed in the Philippines, uh, we were supposed to be here only for two years, 2000. My, uh, my husband is from the Philippines and he was asked to help rebuild the country. And then so we were supposed to be here, but we, we stayed on because of your herbs. Out of 25 best herbs in the world, you have 19. There is no reason why one single uh, child in this country is malnourished. There is no reason why we have so much cancer. There is no reason why Philippine women is the highest mortality of breast cancer and the lowest rate of survival. We have the highest mortality. We don't have the highest breast cancer, but our women die from breast cancer more than any part of the world. <coughs> There is no reason for that. There is no reason why you walk at the kidney center and you see nine-year-old, four-year-old having dialysis. Because you have been a bad. There is no reason why we have one person in this room to be diabetic because you have the Ampalaya in Malugay. So that was the reason. And we have to learn how to live fully with hydrated body. We have to, um, since we are on hydration, if you drink the iced tea at the restaurant, which is very attractive because you can sit in the restaurant for the whole day paying only 70 pesos. 
because it's a bottomless tea. But do you know that every cup of that iced tea, every glass of that iced tea has 20%, uh, have 20 milligrams of oxalic acid. Oxalic acid is the substance that builds up kidney stones. So that um, it's not just the kidney stones, but the syrup. The syrup that goes with it will really kill your immune system. The next one is that we clean our house, we clean our clothes, we clean our uh, body all the time, but we never clean the inside. How do you clean the inside? You don't have to pay 50,000, 20,000 on a designer detox. No, you don't have to. Every time that you exercise, you sweat, you, you detox. Every time that you drink water, you detox. Every time that you eat talbos da kamote, you detox. So it's not, well, we don't have money to do it. No, it is it's very, remember, you have 19 best herbs in the world. You have 19. Next one is that we improve our lifestyle. It, because of the, the, the soap, the, what do you call them? Um, the, because of television, we don't sleep anymore. I know that you guys don't sleep early because your work is networking and normally the people that are available in networking is after five, hour, five o'clock. <laughs> and then our children, are, our, our children, our young ones, our future father and mother of this country are in the police center. So we have to see if we can if we can get around, if we can temper the loss of circadian rhythm. The loss of circadian rhythm is that as long as we are anchored to the earth, as long as we're in the earth, we are bound by the circadian rhythm. What is the circadian rhythm? The circadian rhythm is that we are um, anchored to this, I mean, we are governed by, by the rising and the setting of the sun. Our body, uh, if we, our body repairs from nine o'clock in the evening to two o'clock in the morning. So if you are, so if you are working for the call center, or if you're sleeping uh, because you are a top producer, is that the one, the term? Uh, you sleep at one o'clock. Uh, you will have to do something. If you are going to sleep at 2 o'clock, that means you will, your body is going to age very fast because there is no repair. We repair, our body repair. Can you believe how awesome uh, a one person, uh, one, one, one creature is? Yeah. It's awesome, one human being. I don't, I, uh, with my 26 years of taking care of 90% conservation, I have, um, I have decided, or I have uh, found, or I was convinced that one single human being is a, is a perfect creature. Because the way God has made us, that we have, um, we have that time wherein our body repairs by itself, we have that time where in metabolism, we have a pick up on the metabolism of our body. Um, we have and just our digestive system. Just the liver produces the bile, and the bile will go to the gallbladder, and when you start chewing, the gallbladder will squeeze the bile to go to the digestive system, to digest the food, to mix with hydrochloric acid, and uh, the food that you have chew, uh, that you that, 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 that you were chewing and, and, and part of them and together it it it, it, uh, it equals the gesture. So if we if we realize this, how awesome is one human being? We, we will never hurt anybody. So sleep is your best source of energy. So if you are sleeping late, you can go ahead and recreate. If you're going to wake up early, anyway, you only work during the after, I mean, in the afternoon. But you make sure that your room is totally pitch dark. Because even if you're asleep, the the part of the brain 
Filipino, we, uh, what do you call them, is awake, uh, that even that the single light, even like a flashlight, is going to affect your sleep, the quality of sleep that you have. The next one is to boost your immune system. After this, I think you will know, how do we boost your immune system? This is your product, the, the Gravitrol. I was uh, with Respitrol. Uh, what do you call them? I'm, I'm familiar with your Camo Camo and the Maca. All the ingredients that you have, I'm very familiar um, with, with what it use. So I'm not going to, uh, to tell you what, what you have because I checked your, uh, what do you call them? I was going to assign to talk about this, but I was never given a material. But because, uh, so, and um, I think the only thing that I could say with that product, or if, if, I, if you're going to ask me one single thing about it, it, it repairs your DNA. And uh, your, your, pure, your pure nature, see, uh, what do you call them? It's a very strong antioxidant. That is that helps you on your free radicals, so that you can age slow even if you sleep late, and that help us and <laughs> and that help us on degenerative diseases. And your last one is your maca power, and what they call them. It gives a full potential to men and a desire within for women. <laughs> uh, wellness is a continuous journey. True health then is not out there somewhere, but within each one of us. It is a continuous journey of awareness and discovery. So remember at the very start, I congratulate you because it's, and there's a lot of work that you can do, but, you, but if you are on this health per se, if you are if you are a part of the wellness revolution, we have to be a good example. You have to make sure that you take care of yourself because we cannot give what we don't have. In conclusion, our health is our individual responsibility. To be healthy is our personal decision. I'm hoping that we don't have to wait for the health crisis before taking on the controls of your health. You cannot have, you, you, uh, just, you have a problem with the heart, we take it out and replace. We have a problem with the liver, we take it out and replace. We cannot keep on replacing. Because one day, you cannot replace it anymore. We don't have to be turn, turning around 360 degrees a small incremental steps, baby steps, food and herbs rather than drugs for life, tissue repair rather than replacement of organs. The wellness revolution that we celebrate today, not just in this country, when we first came to the Philippines 2000, people <coughs> will be surprised but they don't, they've never heard about wellness. Now everybody is in it. it. Has been made possible by the great men and women who unselfishly given their lives. To, to all of us to enrich and empower every human being in this planet to take control of their own individual health. We, we are a crisis oriented society. Remember, crisis oriented. We only go to the doctor, the Filipinos most, especially in the Philippines and the U.S. Because everybody has insurance, we we become hypochondriac and we go to the doctor all the time. But the Philippines is the opposite. That's the reason why we have a lot of death and breast on cancer, because they only go at the very end, and normally they cannot do very much for us anymore. So that each one of us has a story. Make your story work. My story has been about my journey with chronically ill patients, specifically stage four cancer. A journey through controversy, inspired by hope. Hope that you and I one day, I hope so, will celebrate the gift of life to the fullest. God bless you all and your joy.